10 years ago, I might have predicted that the full-size SUV market would be in a lot of trouble by now. But thanks to American taste, steady fuel prices, and great product, big utilities still sell in big numbers here. Ford hopes to match its big expectations with its all-new full-sized SUV. Today I'm driving the largest version, the Expedition Max, and I'm going to see just how good these giant utilities have gotten. How does it look? With an object this large, the only path for designers seems to be to go as bold as possible. I think they've mostly succeeded with this massive Ford, which looks square-jawed and masculine, but not entirely unrefined. This Max version is about a foot longer than the standard truck, which does throw the proportions off, even with these huge 22-inch wheels as a base. How's the storage? So, of course, even the standard Expedition has got over 100 cubic feet of maximum storage space, but this is the max version, so it has 121.5. And the cool thing about it is most of it comes behind the third row, so you can actually use all those seats that you paid for and still have plenty of space for cargo. Like everything else on this rig, interior storage space is more than ample. We came up with a cup holder count of nine. Storage under the armrest is enough for a laptop, a large purse, or even a small bag of groceries. And everywhere you look, designers have added handy places to stash all the stuff that you or your kids might bring along for the ride. Is it roomy? The front two seats in particular are a wash in available leg, elbow, and headroom. Clearance in the second row is compromised somewhat by the panoramic roof, but if you're not six foot five like me, you'll not likely notice. And then the third row is perhaps a little tighter than you'd expect for something this long. The fact that you can move the second row of seats forward and back means there's more flexibility to make every seat workable. How does the interior feel? Now, this is Ford's Platinum trim level, which really brings a mainstream vehicle up into the near premium class. And you get a lot of stuff that feels luxury in here, like these cream-colored leather seats with really neat stitching that's repeated over here on the door cards, and I think just looks cool. Is it well equipped? I've got the Expedition Max Platinum, meaning a whole host of equipment comes along with the trim level. There's a laundry list of automatic features that make living with this beast easier. Powered running boards, a hands-free tailgate, and power folding third and second rows, just to name a few. Inside, you'll find lots of leather, of course, but also multi-contour seats, a panoramic glass roof, and the up-level Bang & Olufsen sound system. Finally, there are features that make driving and maneuvering a nearly 19-foot vehicle a little easier. The 360-degree camera in particular is a godsend, and active park assist might cut down on the stress of trying to street park this behemoth. How's the infotainment system? The SYNC 3 system is solidly in the middle of the infotainment pack. It's not going to blow your mind if you haven't used it before, but I find it really easy to navigate the functions that I'm looking for. The additions of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as the handy secured charge mat and USB ports, make using your phone via the 8-inch touchscreen pretty simple. Is it a good daily driver? Yeah, this thing's a beautiful daily driver. So once you get used to the size, and that does take a little getting used to, the ride is very smooth. Um, we've noticed a couple more rattles than maybe we expected, but ultimately it's really pretty quiet too. Plus it's very comfortable. I've done most of the driving, but from sitting in the other seats, I know that they would all be good places to spend time. The other thing that I really like is the steering works for this vehicle. So when I'm going 75 on the highway, it feels pretty stable. And when I'm just puttering around in a parking lot trying to find a space, it's really easy to maneuver. It doesn't have any feel, but it works for the Expedition. Is it fun to drive? 
For all the heft here, Ford's 3.5 liter turbocharged EcoBoost V6 actually does a great job of moving the Expedition along. It's making 400 horsepower and 480 pound-feet of torque, and it certainly feels reasonable to get up to highway speeds and to make passing maneuvers probably faster than I even should. But aside from going fast in a straight line, there's just not a whole lot to do here, right? This is definitely a handling vehicle at almost 20 feet long. The other thing I wanna mention is, while the 10-speed transmission is fine when I just leave it alone, don't confuse this M button for manual mode to think that this is a vehicle that you should be shifting on your own. There are two buttons here instead of paddle shifters or a stick to pull on to shift up and down, which is fine if you need to do the occasional tweak when you're towing something, but it does not behave like a sports car. It doesn't even behave like a Raptor. How's the fuel economy? With the smaller displacement engine and a brand new 10-speed automatic transmission, Expedition is actually almost at the top of the class in terms of fuel economy with ratings of 16 miles per gallon city and 21 highway. Only the GM full-size SUVs with their modern 5.3 liter V8s are better, and then only by one mile per gallon highway. How much is it? A standard length two-wheel drive base expedition starts in the low $50,000 range, while our basically top spec version clears 80 grand. That's a big range. And while pricing is competitive with the segment at those top trim levels, on the base end, the Ford is quite a bit more expensive than Tahoe, Sequoia, and Armada. What are the negatives? If all you really need is a large three-row vehicle with four-wheel drive, then there are definitely more inexpensive ways to do it than with this Expedition. Ford's pricing is aggressive. Who should buy it? In terms of ease of use, feature set, driving pleasure, and style, the Expedition is really high on my list of best full-size SUVs. Don't shop for a family-sized 4x4 without test driving this Ford. 